And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at a game from Queen Games called uh, London Markets. I almost called it The Junk, which is a game that this re-implements. This is a game about getting different goods and selling them and trying to get money. You're going to auction and use workers. And so, the original game was nominated for a Game of the Year award. Let's take a look at how this one looks. <laughs> So there's a bit of randomness at the beginning of the board where you're going to have different goods. You got coffee and cloth and and like antiques and soap. And then this is kind of a wild over here. The uh, They're going to be set in different areas. And you're also going to have some of these people placed out on different spots on the board. And then the game is going to be taking place over rounds. Now in this game, players are trying to get the most money. And there's lots of little paper money because why not put paper money in games? Players have essentially a pile of uh, tokens of their color. These, are, these stand for three crates in a row, and you're going to want to have these in different areas. So on each turn of the game, players, and starting with, and, and they're gonna go in player order, turn order, and turn order is a big thing here, and they have a little piece for that, is they're going to pick one of these five people on the board. There are three outside here, and there are two assistants here. So when you pick someone, you turn them over and you take their action. And then, or you can take, use one of these assistants, you turn them over and you can take an action that it shows on the space that that assistant's on at one of the spots where there isn't people. So what are the different actions? Well, this guy here with the two times symbol allows you to place two rows of your crates in a spot. So let's say I was red player and I was, and I was doing it here. I would add one and then you start crisscrossing them. The more crates that you so you can see red now here has uh, seven out of the nine crates are reds. But that could change as other people over the course of the game are going to be adding more crates to this. So they're, you know, suddenly red might have his taken out and then this happens and now red's down to two. So the, that's what that guy does. This guy here, when you use him, you will count how many crates you have available and you'll get that many goods from that area. So if I was yellow, I would be getting three cloth goods here. You always get at least three. So if red used this action, red would still get three. If you have the gain profits guy at a spot, you will get money equal to the number of goods that you have somewhere. So here green would get four if they used it. Red and yellow would get three because again, you always get at least three. And again, if you use the assistant, you'll be able to like this one here, let you put one row of crates out in one of the spots. Uh, this guy here lets you take goods in one of the two spots where you don't have, uh, where, where these people aren't. And at the end of each round, all the folks here are going to move clockwise to the next available building, and the two assistants will move forward, which is a way that also the game is going to end. After this happens, each player is going to be able to replenish. They're going to take a good card of their choice um, into their hands, so you get any one good, and then players are going to basically secretly bid cards from their hand. They pick one type of goods from their hand, so maybe I pick coffee, and I'm gonna bid four coffee. And then everyone reveals them, you lose all of it, and whoever bid the most is going to get that much money, or in the case of the one that shows the card next to it, they get to pick up any one stack of cards here, go through it, and take one of these cards, which are special abilities, which can get you more points. Uh, let, you, can, you can do something special if you have, you know, here you can put one out anywhere on the board, here you'll win a tiebreaker and a future thing and things like that. And so players are going to be slowly getting these as time goes by having these auctions. Although there's not always an auction, two rounds the market is closed. And so you'll skip the auction that turn and just, again, take the different actions out here. That's essentially the whole game. Each player is going to be uh, taking these actions. They're going to be moving these, you know, you're going to be moving these. The turn order is going to change, players are going to be getting these, trying to fill up the crates to get money or more goods, and then using the goods to get more money. Because again, the whole goal of this game is to have the most money, whoever does that wins. 
Now coming out the gate, London Markets had one thing going against it, and that's that the game looks dreadfully boring. These rows of uh, crates just look like, I don't know, they look like a rug pattern. There's the little paper money. The whole board is a map of London, which isn't bad, but it's kind of washed out. I just thought the whole thing looked dreadfully dull and getting the different goods and it's like, ooh, yay, goods for money. Okay, so the theme, whatever. That doesn't mean it's a bad game. I'm just saying that it kind of wasn't very impressive, but I had heard that it was game of the year, so I played it. And actually, the mechanisms of the game are, are very intriguing. I like the using a worker, building the crates in different columns, and then using those crates to get money. I also like going through the special cards. As the time goes by, the special cards get worse and worse because people are pulling the ones they want out. But some special cards can give you a whole lot of points if you get a certain uh, combination. Like, for example, if I have five crates in Brixton Market in Covent Garden and I have this card, I can use it to get 14 pounds. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, so getting special cards can get you those extra money. But at the same time, if you focus on that, you could also like fill up a whole area with crates and then boom, get the money for that. That's nine bucks. That's a big deal. Nine pounds. Sorry. But even though I thought that was interesting, the biggest problem I found with London markets was kind of like a, oh, that's interesting. We're doing it again. Oh, we're doing it again. Oh, we're doing it again. And this game just felt repetitious. If I was using some of these mechanisms in a bigger game, I probably wouldn't mind, but this whole, everyone use a worker, now let's all do the secret auction, and oh, the coffee didn't sell this time, no one put coffee cards out, well, let's do it again until someone puts coffee cards out and wins that. And so it just felt like you were doing it over. It's wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat. And there wasn't actually a lot of variety too. The only real variety in the game is the special cards. Other than that, it's like, put some crates out, use those crates to get money, or to get uh, goods cards. Use those good cards to get money. And we will do that again. So the fact that it feels repetitive and it looks extremely mundane, those don't really make a good combination for me. Now here's the deal. I don't think that the game is awful. I just don't like it. Um, in the sense that I think that some people will enjoy this, but for me it just felt like this re repetitive machine that didn't have a soul and at the same time didn't really, you know, I, I can live without the soul if, if it feels like, ooh, what exciting thing's gonna happen next and it did. Now there were moments. There were moments where like, ooh, the worker coming to give money's there and that's, I just got all nine crates, that's great. But, and I guess the setup's there, but people can really mess you up too. It's, it, it's easy to stop other people, it's easy to, to put crates in, it's almost like a take that. You're like, well, I'm gonna put these crates out, I'm gonna stick them here and put them on top of yours. Okay, great. I hurt you, I didn't mean to, I'm helping myself out. Oh, did you spend a lot of time getting a lot of crates and then in two turns we just got rid of that? Well, <laughs> I don't know. This game left me feeling unfulfilled. It's like eating a uh, slice of white bread for dinner and it, it's okay, it doesn't fill you up and it wasn't really that delicious either. So, eh, I'm gonna have to pass on this one, unfortunately, London Markets. Dice Tower Judgment, kinda bland. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Yeah.